What do you want me to do, Lord? This phrase was made famous by a ruthless man who was doing evil. When he met the Lord, he asked him this phrase, and for this he received the grace of holiness. This happened to St. Paul, known as Saul, before his conversion. He was on his way to Damascus to persecute Christians. He was a very devout Pharisee and a fierce opponent of the early Christian movement. He had received authorization from the Jewish high priest to arrest the followers of Jesus in Damascus and take them back to Jerusalem to be punished. A bright light from heaven suddenly surrounded him, and he fell to the ground. He heard the voice saying, Soul, Soul, why are you persecuting me? When Saul asked who was speaking, the voice replied, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. Subsequently, Saul converted to Christianity and began to preach about Jesus. This moment marked his profound conversion, and from then on he became known as Paul, one of the most influential apostles and the key figure in the spread of Christianity. And what was the key moment of this conversion? It was the moment when he saw the light of the Lord and heard his voice rebuking him for his inappropriate behavior. The voice of the Lord touched his heart and made him reflect. As a result, Paul went from being a persecutor of Christians to an ardent apostle protector and promoter of Christianity. With this important phrase, St. Paul said, What do you want me to do, Lord? We can consider what would happen to us speaking to the Lord like this. It is the same as if we are having an encounter with Jesus in our heart and annihilating our will to submit to the divine will, something that initiates us on the path of holiness. Jesus Christ submitted to the will of the Father, saying, Here I am, O God, I have come to do your will. Hebrews 10, verse 7. Thus, his word refers to the fulfillment of his mission, fully accepting God's will and conforming to his plan of salvation. In the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus praying to the Eternal Father said, Not my will, but yours be done, thus asking him to remove the cup of anguish that represented his own passion and death. Luke 22 verse 42. The Virgin Mary in her fiat, answering God through the angel, said, Be it done unto me according to your word. Luke 1 verse 38. And Jesus, in the last moment of his life, made his total surrender to the Eternal Father when he said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Luke 23, verse 46. And this is what God expects of us, that His kingdom of the divine will be established in our hearts. As we pray in the Lord's Prayer, Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Matthew 6, verse 10. Seeking to enter into the holiness found in the Holy Scriptures, we too can do something similar before God to attain the grace of perfection and holiness that the kingdom of heaven requires in our hearts. We must then live our lives according to the word of God and in imitation of Jesus, Mary and the saints. Do everything to please the divine will. God wants our souls to be living mirrors of his divine image and this is achieved step by step, drop by drop, when we begin to live in the kingdom of the divine will. This we can do as St. Paul did, always consulting the Lord in our decisions, especially by accepting His divine will 
when we are presented with complicated situations. We all want to resist the divine designs because of our self-love, but God wants to test us continually and wants us to surrender our will to submit to His. It is very important to have a good attitude in the face of adversities, problems, illnesses, needs, etc. The best way to solve everything is to say to the Lord, take care of everything. In this way, we yield our will to the divine will and with confidence we wait patiently and with resignation for what the Lord wants for us. It is the same as doing the Word of God which says, Deny yourself. To live in conformity with the divine will is to play ourselves in the Lord's hands in every kind of problem that comes our way daily. For as the Lord says, every day brings its own toil, and He's always testing our will. Matthew 11, verses 28 to 30 so that we will take his yoke upon us and follow him. Matthew 6, verse 34 Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, because tomorrow will have its own worries.